and he destroys that. 407-25 for Zane Brophy. And ladies and gentlemen, that is a new American record. Auto sequence start in five, four, three, two, one. It's, it, it just kind of plays into the whole personality of mine. Like, this is really hard. How much help do I need doing it? My name is Zane Grothy. I'm 29 years old. I'm from Boulder City, Nevada. I'm a professional distance swimmer and an aspiring rocket scientist. My mom used to use the phrase, she still uses the phrase all the time, it's not rocket science. And now I can come back at her and be like, even if it was, I'd be able to understand it. I've always been drawn to the engineering side of things. I didn't necessarily know that's what that was, but even as a kid, I was always interested in space and airplanes and stuff like that. Um, fortunately, my mom taught me at a very young age that swimming doesn't last forever, you know, and I remember she brought up um, mentioning Mark Spitz. And I was like, oh yeah, that guy won all those medals back then. She's like, he's still around. He just works a normal job now. And that was the first time it kind of clicked. I was like, oh, like there's a lot of life after sport. You know, swimming doesn't last very long. On your mark, go. I got into swimming when I was a little kid. Um, and I mean really young. I started my first um, mom and baby lessons when I was still an infant. And I think I joined the local Parks and Rec swim team when I was three years old. And I was on that team until I was 18. So, you know, I probably could swim before I could walk. Use your arms, Zane. I currently compete in four different races, the 200, the 400, the 800, and the 1500 freestyle. I didn't quite understand the potential of being a good swimmer until this one 25 butterfly race when I was six years old. There was a group of girls in front of me complaining about having to do butterfly, this is how hard it was. And I don't know what it was, but I just jumped into the conversation and said, I like butterfly. When I got up for my race, it just, it felt so good. It felt amazing. And my mom told me that I almost broke the team record after that race. And I, that's the first time when I was like, oh, I almost broke a record. Like that's as, like that's like the fastest that's ever been. And I thought that was incredible. And I thought, wow, I'm actually pretty good at this. Freestyle is kind of a unique stroke. It's the only stroke that you consistently look at your competitors. Um, every other stroke, you're either looking up, looking forward, or looking down. In freestyle, you're going to be looking at your competitors every time, especially on distance freestyle. You, you know, it, it's interesting to know what your strategy is and what they are. And one thing I do is I look directly at my competitors during the race and I tell them, um, I don't break. You know, you can't break me. Um, so it's just kind of one of those things like you can't break me, um, only I can break me, and I don't break. I left Auburn the day I graduated, and that was strictly for swimming. I uh, drove down to Tallahassee, Florida to start swimming with FSU, and a coach, the coach, the head coach there was the coach that I had in college. So I figured, you know, I was successful under him, I'll, you know, that's what I need to get back to and start swimming again. Um, I swam three rested meets over the course of a year, and each one got slower and slower. And I figured this is, this is it, I can't keep doing this anymore, I need to go get a job and you know, I'll pay for my own bills. And it finally dawned on me, I was like, you know, I haven't been training the way I want to train and I, the, everything's pointing towards the fact that I should be getting better. So at that point, you know, I really had nothing to lose. I you know, asked my financial supporters, my parents, if I could give it one more shot and try to try a different program and do the training that I think would, would work best for me. And that brought me to Bloomington, Indiana. And that was six years ago, and I'm still here in Bloomington now. And uh, that's, that's really you know, what worked the best and what I'm still doing. I've been extremely disappointed in myself to look back on a review and see myself win nationals, make a world championship team, and have a frown on my face. 
that, that doesn't look good. You know, I need to be more appreciative of you know, what I've got in this moment because it's never going to last. This last push for Tokyo 2020, Tokyo 2021 would kind of be my last like true dedication to the sport. Um, I don't want it to be the end of my competitive career. I do want to keep swimming for another three years, see if I can make it to Paris 2024. See how I go, I'll throw my hat in the ring. So I'm not, I'm not entirely walking away from the sport, but um, I'm not gonna hang all of my emotional energy and time on it as well. That is where um, picking up school is starting now. Um, I've started on a master's degree and the idea is to be finished with that in 2024 or before so that when I finish my swimming career I can finish the master's degree as well and hit the ground running with getting a job. So it's it's so simple. I am in Sports Illustrated. Full page spread, that's my back deck. Getting older and going through high school, you know, I thought about, you know, what, how cool would it be to be able to have the tag, you know, professional athlete, rocket scientist. You know, that's a, that's a, a tough break, but, you know, if I start now, I could probably accomplish it at some point. And uh, that's what drew me to distance swimming, that's what drew me to rocket science in general. Yeah. Hasn't always been an easy road, but, <laughs> but it is definitely something to be proud of. Yeah.